today we will talk about material selection of suppressors okay and why we use titanium now we bubble off on a suppressor we uh it'll form bubbles that fails cerakote fails at 1800 degrees fahrenheit that's what cerakote states on um on what their failure point is okay now when we run full auto on us um on these suppressors we have bubbled it off quite often um, we think that it's actually higher than that, that the circuit performance is actually higher than what they state. So um, that's going to be around 19, 1950. Now, some of your steels um, are going to freaking fail at uh, 1950 to 21, 2150 in that range. Depends on what grade of steel it is and such. We kind of have the eutectic, which is the melting point of that material. That's the point that uh, it loses all strength. It's just right at the point of start of failure. Um, so that, uh, you know, the molecules and everything else are going to give way. Okay, so you design the red line um, is below that level for performance. Okay, very important. Now, suppressors, a lot of them are made out of stainless steel. Let's see, okay, well, I have a stainless steel uh, blast baffle, okay? And that's where a lot of the heat for most suppressors are going to go to. Okay, is the blast baffle. So stainless steel is 2200 in that neck of the woods. Depends on the grade of stainless steel that they use. Okay, so the red line below that is what you're going to want to design to. Now, as you can see, you got full 500 rounds here before you're really reaching that uh, point of failure. Okay, that's how we've kind of drawn this out. It's just an estimate of how this stuff goes, how it performs. Okay, now there's a specific heat CP. And, uh, and that's this, the designation of specific heat, okay? So the desert in, um, uh, out in the Middle East, it only can get so hot, okay? Because air and sand and all those things there have a specific heat. It's the maximum retention of heat. It's like a battery. A battery can only hold so much juice, okay? No matter how much juice you put into it, it can only hold so much energy. The same thing, that same energy, thermal energy in this case, for sand molecules and heat uh, and air, okay, is going to, it can only hold so much heat. Whether that's 130 degrees, it's not going to get to 200, 300, 400 degrees inside of, uh, inside atmosphere. Even on other planets, you're going to be getting radiation energy from that source. Okay, that's why it's 300, 400 degrees on other planets is because it's radiation energy um, from that source. It's not the, the, the heat capacity of those materials. Okay, so scientifically materials can only like either put out, like in the case of gunpowder, so much heat and they can only absorb so much heat. Okay, but in the case of steels, they can absorb enough heat to where they reach their own melting point. Okay, uh, but the gunpowder that's putting it out when you're putting the blast out and you're doing full auto shooting, it's going to creep up to its maximum heat output. Okay, some, uh, some fires, some flames, you put it on there, it's a cooler flame. It can only put out so much heat. Okay, um, only so many BTUs. So if your thing doesn't melt or doesn't boil water or something like that, but it's not putting that, that much heat out. It will get it to that temperature eventually, but is it boiling or did it melt it? You know, that's, that's all relative. So whenever we're, we're talking about your stainless steels, Hasteloids, your, um, your Inconels, which are nickel based, uh, materials, those are going to start failing at 2,400. Okay. Um, in that range. Okay, you might have some reaching 2600, but 2600 for um, their super crazy space alloys, um, super expensive, okay? Um, but that's, that's about the limit of any type of uh, basically iron and steel-based uh, metal, okay? Now, what gets them to these points, what makes stainless steel and has alloys are the alloying compounds that they put into that material. So your nickels, your mag magnesiums, your cobalts, your, uh, e you know, even traces of titanium, um, all of those things, manganese, um, all of those things create the, with a recipe and a mixing pot. Um, that's what creates that kind of metal. Okay. Now a new ore, a new different type of material is titanium, also aluminum. Um, I didn't even put aluminum on here. 
So here's the deal. This is a very important part. <laughs> 985 that is 6061 in the T6 that is the melting point for 6061 T6 aluminum okay and this is critical because you have some rifle cans out there that are made out of aluminum and when they say you can only shoot one round every two minutes or one minute, whatever that is, that designation is, they're serious about that. Because you will heat up. If you start running 30, 30 rounds through it, and I've done it, we, uh, we test our monocores on aluminum, AR-15s and stuff like that, right? So we test the sound if we wanna, because it's much cheaper to do. Now, I will tell you, I have personal experience, at 58 rounds, Pretty much every single time on run, it's two 30 round mags on an AR. Not going too hard with it, just boom, 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 boom. Okay, not running super hard like full auto. At 50, 57, 58 rounds, that monocore separates and in, in there's a catastrophic failure because you've reached the melting point of aluminum. Okay, so aluminum for a 22 long rifle. Okay, for 22s is okay because there's such little powder inside of there. There's only a specific amount of, of heat that it can put out. So while you might be running uh, 700 or 600 degrees, it's okay to, to use that for aluminum. If you put your hand on it, it's still going to feel just as hot as 2000 degrees because you're going to burn the skin off your hands. Now the rate and all that stuff, but for you and your body and what you can sense, it probably still feels like, oh, well, the aluminum can is just as hot as those. In all actuality, it's not. It's just a whole nother level of heat, right? So any aluminum-based suppressors for any centerfire rifle platform, I highly, highly recommend against that, okay? Um, it is light. The aluminum ore, the aluminum material is light. It's... Um, twice as light as titanium whereas titanium is almost twice as light as your steels okay so aluminum is super light okay but it can only absorb so much heat before it breaks down um, and that's that's where that's where aluminum is now uh, where if you're designing your suppressors for your stellites and all those type of things you are going to get a lot of a lot of uh, reliability out of that 500 you know 1000 rounds when you design the suppressor you've got to think about the cross-sectional area of we're going to just draw a little circle here okay and uh, if you've got a piece of material okay the cross-sectional area the thickness of that material will give you the strength of that application have you considered that a thinner piece of material has the same exact strength? If you're going to design something out of, uh, let's just say, Inconel, okay, Inconel blast baffles, a thinner cross sectional area, okay, versus a thicker cross sectional area, the strength of the material does not change. The strength of the material is the exact same. But, the thickness of it allows it to handle twice as much force, okay, for the stress. So, if you're going to design something for robustness at extreme temperatures, it can handle it. The actual strength of that material is going to go down as you increase up to its eutectic point. And in order to compensate for that, you have to increase the thickness of this, okay? So if I design this with a thicker cross-sectional area, it will be stronger and weight goes up. You have a small weight, a larger weight, and a lot larger weight, okay? So the weight is increasing. Your suppressor is getting heavier. Another problem that we're gonna have in suppressors when it comes to accuracy in this issue is that all of these materials have different thermal coefficients of expansion. And so while one material, 
if you connect two pieces of material together that are of different materials, they will expand at different rates. And if they expand at different rates and they're connected and fastened, whether that's be welded, whether that be threaded or anything like that, you're going to essentially deform that material. It's impossible to do. It's impossible to avoid because one will expand at a different rate than the other one will throughout this process. And then when they go back after cooling, do they go back to the same location? Because did you deform, did you stre stress that joint to a point that you deformed the material just ever so slightly and does it go back? These are these are design topics and areas of discussion that um, that are up there a little bit, but I want to share this with you because when you're combining different materials, oh, I have an ink and L blast baffle, and then it's a stainless steel baffles, and then we go to whatever aluminum on the back end, you're gonna have crazy deviations in center line, which is gonna affect your performance going to um, the bore of that suppressor is not going to be in the same place. And as we did, as we talked about in another discussion, you create lift on one side of the bullet, which destabilizes the bullet. Now, titanium, we're not going to reach that level. Okay. Of eutectic. We're just not going to do it. There's not enough specific heat there. Okay. Now we do have the same problem. As temperature goes up, the strength of that material does come down a little bit. But look at the look at the gap that we're in. We have a large gap, a lot of room to play with there. Titanium is so much lighter than the steels over here that I can already use a very thick cross-sectional area. But yet it's just as light, if not lighter, than the thinnest cross-sectional area you can use for your stellites and your ink canals. So I can have all of this strength, but I can be lighter. And we can run full auto. And we can do much more with it. The only downside to using titanium, the only thing that we, that is, you know, you got to have, you can't have everything right? You can have the strength, you can have the lightweight, and you can have everything. But what's the downside? The downside of titanium is wear. The same with aluminum. Okay, if you took a, a blasting cabinet with a sand blasting and just held it right there on aluminum, you will wear through that aluminum faster than you will wear through the titanium. You can wear through, okay, you're blasting, you can wear through the titanium faster than you can the Inconel. So the Inconel Blast Baffle does a very, very good job of handling the unburnt powders and that abrasiveness of that environment of the unburnt powders hitting that surface. That's why we like to use, or suppressor companies like to use Inconels and something that's very, very hard, that performs well with abrasion at elevated temperatures. Okay. Titanium, you're going to wear through much faster. But what's the rate? Okay. The thicker that cross section is, the longer it's going to last. So I'm already using everything to my advantage by using a thick cross sectional uh, area of titanium. I'm lighter. I've got higher temperature resistance. Okay. The thermal, the thermal coefficient of expansion. While it is, it's pretty large for titanium, it's larger than these guys here, it can spring back, go back and forth very reliably back to the, uh, the original location. It has, a ve it has one of the best memories, what we call, um, of, every, of any material. So um, what we're gonna get out of that is reliable performance. Here's another thing, our suppressors are made what the bullet sees is only one machine, one precision machine part. 
and the bullet sees that and it's only done in one operation okay where when you machine things you have multiple setups every time you have a setup there's going to be a tolerance stack up you can't indicate that into the machine perfectly it's impossible okay now uh, some setups are better than others one will produce you plus or minus ten thousandths one will produce plus or minus uh, uh you know two two ten thousandths right which is uh three decimal places and a two versus uh one decimal one zero decimal place one zero and a ten okay so significantly larger okay now we're seeing that out of one piece well guess what it, there, that means that the uh, there's no tolerance stack up. It's precision machine. The bullet's going to see the same flight of path down that same center line, okay? And because it's only one piece, we're not going to have this curvature problem because of dissimilar materials being assembled in the same suppressor. Very critical. One piece suppressor, one monocore. It's one of the reasons why we're so accurate and it always shoots the same place is because when you start stacking materials inside of there then you're going to have deviations and that deviation is it'll change over time okay and you might see that in your suppressors i've had a suppressor for 5 years and it seems like every couple of years i have to i have to rezero you know like my but you really don't know cuz the point of impact shift every, every time you may take it off and put it back on um, it may be different, so you're you don't know because you're always chasing your point of impact. Um, so you're not gonna you might not see it, but maybe that is why that's changing all the time. Because every time you take it off and shoot it and cool, it's just cooled back to a different location, and the lift that it's creating on the bullet is is at a different place. It's changing how it's creating what side of the bullet's creating lift on. Okay, so uh, so that's titanium. Um, we can get great. Um, Great rare resistance. Um, well, it's not as good, but we can design around that. Another thing that we do in our in our suppressors is if this is a baffle, okay, of cross-sectional area, and we have the bullet that passes through that baffle, we handle something with design with our brakes. That's why we say that our suppressors are full auto rated with the brake. The full auto rating, if you have uh, all the powder is burned up. In, so if you have, let's say, a 20-inch 308 barrel, um, all the powder is going to be burned up in that, in that barrel length, right? If you start running a SBR, like 10-inch SBRs, you're not burning all the powder. So you have molten granulars of powder, of solids, that are basically sandblasting with molten granulars. That's going to put a lot of wear on any surface. So you're pounding that surface right but what we do is we actually stick the brake right in front of the baffle okay so this is a brake with ports on it right and so you'll have the uh, the borehole of the brake here protecting sitting right in front of that baffle so now all the powders, whenever it exits the muzzles, they come out in a fan shape, right? They start to spread. So they hit this steel baffle and they hit this steel baffle. And then that's for these. And then these here are hitting this steel baffle and this steel baffle, okay? And the rest are kind of passing through, really not hitting. And by the time that it's traveled to the next baffle, they have lost so much energy that you're not going to see the wear and tear. That's why it's important if you're going to run full auto, especially on an SBR, to use our brakes with our cans. You're not going to see the wear and tear. So when we were talking about blasting through that surface, through these surfaces with titanium, and that's the only drawback, well, how many rounds are we talking about? We see 90,000, 100,000 rounds. If you're burning up all the powder, we haven't seen it wear through yet. Um, 150,000 rounds. So are you going to shoot that many rounds on your suppressor? And 
if you are shooting that many rounds and you're having that much fun with it, uh, we're actually probably going to replace that core for you as a warranty because we want to know, we need that data point to see if the design is in line. And you might be one of the only people that are using it that hard, right? Because we're not seeing it. So for me to replace one sporadically here or there for somebody who's using it to that kind of level, I don't, if you're running it on a saw or something like that, I want that data point. That is valuable information for me and I will exchange that data for, um, for your core, right? To get your suppressor back up to where it needs to be. So there's nothing to worry about. We've got it in the design. We've got thousands of suppressors tested. Uh, we started the company back in 2011. So now we're seven years of history here. And we know with that much history, the performance is rock solid. It's the best on the market. You're not gonna have the performance issues that you're going to have with these other materials. That's why we're gonna stick with titanium. And we're gonna stick with one piece, one machine piece, not multiple pieces, okay? Um, when you start welding, you're, when you're welding, you have a, a, a baffle that you're going to weld to another baffle, okay? Inside of this weld, you're going to use a dissimilar metal most of the time, okay? It's an alloy, it's, it just, it helps with the alloying and with some of the stuff. There's uh, American Welding Society pretty much dictates what alloying metal that you're gonna use. Um, even if you did use the same amount, there is going to be a heat affected zone in that weld. The heat affected zone is the weakest part and it also has a different crystalline structure and a different strength that you can apply to it. Now within, even if you had, in a, in a, in a steel, I'm running out of board space here, um, in a steel, okay, if you had, if it's like a cake batter, a cake that's mixed, we call that homogenous steels, right? It'll perform the same way every single time. Now, that's all one extruded piece of steel, the same microstructure, the same state that it's in. But if you're mixing a cake batter and you don't get it all mixed or brownies or something like that and you have balls of powder inside of there that did not mix completely, that's gonna taste different, the texture's gonna be different, the strength, if you try to break it, it would be different, okay? So now if we throw in here a zone of different composition, okay? A heat affected zone a different composition as you heat and cool this material it will perform differently in those zones within the same piece of material and when you're talking about welded baffle stacks that is an opportunity for a problem one is heat affected zones don't do well with cyclical loading Combine it with cyclical temperatures, rising very high and low in temperatures, you're gonna have a problem. There's another aspect of material selection that is tempering and annealing. Especially in steels, you can anneal a steel, which means that you're going to, the temperature, uh, the melting point will stay the same. However, the strength of that material will go down. Okay, it will be more pliable. It'll actually be tougher because it can move and bend a lot more. Okay, and it won't break. That's why we want to temper steels a lot, anneal them. Um, so it will, but it will perform differently because it can move. Okay, from the designed intent. So if you design it this way, and then you go out and you heat treat that material because you're just using it, it's gonna perform differently. You're not gonna have that issue with titanium. That's another reason, okay? This, this, this discussion can go on for hours on the different facets of um, different ways to talk about the material selection and why titanium is the superior choice 
for using for um, applying it to suppressors okay it is a superior choice the downside of it is the wear it wears but you can fix that with the engineering design of the actual suppressor okay but if we're going to talk about cyclical heating and cyclical loading okay those vibrational forces that's why the aerospace industry uses tons of titanium just all to it so this your steels your hasolite your nickel base your inconels they're great materials they really are they're super materials okay you're going to reach a limit to where you're going to get into the zone of its capabilities and you can increase the cross-sectional areas of those zones so that it can handle it and not be a problem but when you increase the cross-sectional areas of those zones of those design features you're going to add weight okay and adding weight is going to now affect your accuracy and your customer experience so uh, so that's why we don't use those materials and when you're trying to design things for lightweight which they they do you don't want to use Inconel throughout the whole suppressor it's going to be a super heavy suppressor that's why you use it where it's critical in the beginning stages of the suppressor you get that blast all those uh high heat the wear all that stuff you get all the benefits of using that material and then you switch to a lighter material as you go down the suppressor the problem with that strategy is that the thermal coefficients of expansions are going to have you all over the place so when it leaves the manufacturing facility they can prove to you it's super accurate it's not a problem it hasn't been it hasn't gone through those heat cycles that you're going to put it through after a year or two years of using it what you will see will be different than what how it left the factory and that's the problem with the material selection and the design working together titanium and the way that we do it it will perform the same way from when it leaves the factory to thousands and thousands of rounds later years and years and years later it will perform the exact same way okay if it doesn't we'll take care of it anyway but from what we see after many many years of doing this is that they're still shooting the exact same place from rifle to rifle from switching to a different rifle then bringing it back to this rifle um, they're uh they're shooting the same exact place and uh others aren't able to do that so that's why we are going to uh leave you a legacy help help you leave a legacy with your family with your hunting trips that you take people on that you actually get the prize that's why we're the legacy of performance so, get yours today, and uh, it's a great time to buy suppressors. Best time it's been in a very long time. Get yours today, and uh, call your dealer, whatever it is. We'll, uh, if you've got questions, give us a shout. Uh, Brendan will take care of you, and uh, we will see you on the range.